in order to calculate the electric field produced by these spherical shell structures, what we're basically going to have to do is apply this equation right here. We can see that to calculate the electric field, you're going to multiply a constant by the amount of enclosed charge divided by a certain distance squared. And what becomes rather challenging in these questions is determine the amount of enclosed charge. So this is the concept that we're going to be keeping in mind as we go through each part. In part A, we are asked to calculate the electric field at the center of the spherical structure. But if we imagine a little Gaussian surface that wraps around that center, it would be a very tiny spherical structure. Hopefully we can see that inside of that tiny spherical Gaussian surface, there would be zero net charge. You don't see any positive charges located in that little sphere that we just drew in a dotted outline. And so since there's no charge within that sphere, <clears throat> excuse me, then the electric field will also equal zero. Now we move on to part B, and we are asked to calculate the electric field at a distance of A divided by 2. Now if we look there, that would be enclosed by a Gaussian surface of radius A divided by 2, so it would look something like that. But look inside of that spherical Gaussian surface. Do you see any positive charges in there? No, there's nothing in there. There's no net charge. And because there's no net charge, then the electric field is also going to be equal zero at that location. We go on to part C, and this time the radius is equal to A. Again, if you draw a spherical Gaussian surface at this location right here, you will see that there is zero enclosed charge within that spherical Gaussian surface. So once again, the electric field is going to equal zero newtons per coulomb at that radius or at that location. But now in part D, things get a little more challenging because here we have a location whose radius is 1.5 A. So you can imagine a sphere drawn like that, a spherical Gaussian surface, and the radius of that is equal to one and a half A. Now, if you look inside of that spherical Gaussian surface that we just outlined in magenta, you will see positive charges. You see them right here. And it becomes our job to figure out how much positive charge is enclosed in this region right here that we've just colored in in blue. How much charge is enclosed within that structure. And so basically, what we have to do is first figure out the volume of that blue structure. You can imagine that blue structure is basically a donut shape. So to calculate the volume of a donut, you would have to calculate the volume of the outer limit of the donut and then subtract the volume of the hole at the center of the donut. So that's what we're going to do is figure out the volume of this donut structure. Now we begin by remembering that the volume of a sphere is equal to 4 thirds times pi times the radius of the sphere cubed. So for our blue shaped donut that we colored in above, we're going to do what we just described. We're going to take the volume of the outer reaches of the donut, so this sphere right here, and then subtract out the volume of this hole right here where there is no charge to be seen. So here we go. We're going to do 4 thirds times pi. Now the outer radius of that donut was 1 and a half A. So it's going to be 1.5 times A. A was 10 centimeters. Let's convert that into meters, right? So 10 centimeters is going to be 0.10 meters. So we'll have 1.5 times 0.10 meters and then cube it. And then we're going to subtract the volume of the hole of the donut. Now the hole has a radius equal to just A. So this will be, if we come down here, 4 thirds times pi and now we're just going to use A, which was the 0.10 meters, and then cube that. Let's punch this into our calculator and see what volume we get for this donut. And when we do that, we can see that the volume of that donut is equal to about 0 0.00995, and that will be in meters cubed. Okay, so we have the volume of that bluish region that we colored in above, but what we really want is the enclosed charge. Now that's going to be relatively easy because we know that the enclosed charge is equal to the volume charge density multiplied by the volume. The question gives us the volume charge density. It was given right there as 1.84 nanocoulombs per meter cubed. So we're going to take 1.84. Now it's in nanocoulombs, so make sure you multiply that by 10 to the minus 9. So that will give you coulombs per meter cubed. And they're going to multiply this by the volume that we just obtained. 
Now when you multiply this, what happens is the meters cubed will cancel out, and then this will give you just a charge represented by coulombs. So here we go, we're going to get the enclosed charge, and this becomes 1.83 times 10 to the minus 11 coulombs. Good. So now we have the enclosed charge of our Gaussian surface. We need to finally calculate the electric field at a distance of 1.5a. So we're going to use this equation right here. Note that this constant right here comes out to 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. So basically the electric field is going to be 8.99 times 10 to the 9th times the enclosed charge and then divided by the distance squared. And again, the distance for part D is one and a half A. So you're gonna go 1.5 times A, which was 0.10 meters, and then square it. So we'll go ahead and punch this into our calculator. And when we do so, we're going to get an electric field magnitude of about 7.31. And this will come out to ne uh, newtons, excuse me, newtons per coulomb. So that is the correct answer to part D. We will move on to part E, a very similar situation here, except now they're changing the radius. The radius is now equal to B. So you just imagine that you have a Gaussian surface that extends out to here. And then to figure out the amount of enclosed charge, you're gonna to have to figure out the amount of charge present in this part of a larger donut, basically. So it's gonna be the same idea. We're gonna calculate the volume of the outer perimeter or the outer reaches of the donut, and then subtract the volume of the hole in the center of the donut. So here we go. This is for part E. The volume is going to equal the 4 thirds times pi times the outer radius of this donut. The outer radius is equal to b, but b is equal to 2a, and a was 0.10 meters, so basically b is 0.20 meters. So you're going to have 0.20 meters, don't forget to cube it, minus 4 thirds times pi times the radius of the whole structure. The whole structure, again, has a radius of a, so that's 0.10 meters. All right, so let's figure out this volume. All right, so we've got the volume. It comes out to about 0 0.0293 meters cubed. Next, you may recall, we're going to get the enclosed charge by taking the volume charge density and multiplying it by the volume of our donut structure. So here we have that 1.84 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs per meter cubed. Multiply that by the volume of the donut that we just figured out. And we can see that the enclosed charge is equal to about 5.4 times 10 to the minus 11. And this will now come out in coulombs because these meters cubed cancel. And then finally, we go back to the equation. We have E is equal to that constant multiplied by the enclosed charge and then divided by the distance squared in part E of the question, the distance that we're trying to figure out the electric field was at a distance equal to B. You can see right here, it says the radius or the distance equals B. That was the 0.2 meters. And then don't forget to square that. And when you work that out, you will see that the electric field magnitude is about 12.1 newtons per coulomb. So that is the correct answer to part E. Finally, we go on to part F and this time the distance is equal to 3b. And so we'd have to draw a new Gaussian surface. Now this will not be to scale, but basically 3b would be a sphere that encloses the entire spherical structure given in the question. So this distance right here is going to be 3b. Now you'll notice that the amount of enclosed charge within this magenta colored spherical surface is the same amount of enclosed charge that we had in part E. Remember in part E, the radius was equal to just B and that enclosed that same amount of positive charge in blue that this larger structure encloses. So in other words, we can simply use the exact same enclosed charge from part E in part F. It's the same amount of charge enclosed. 
The only difference, of course, is the distance where we're calculating the electric field will change. So we'll use the same charge of 5.4 times 10 to the minus 11 coulombs. And then this time, we're going to divide by a different distance. It's not b, it's 3b. So it's going to be 3 times the 0.2 meters. And then again, don't forget to square it. And when you punch this into your calculator, you will get an electric field magnitude of about 1.3 five newtons per coulomb, and that is the correct answer to part F.